In the heart of the night, this world were bright. We would set it light. In the heart of the night, in the heart of the night, this world were bright. We would set it light. In the heart of the night. This is my first time doing one of these sort of movie reviews and forgive me for possibly being a little bit of a nervous wreck in this because I just spent 20 minutes trying to find my sunglasses. Not these, another pair of sunglasses that I just got and cannot find anywhere. My memory is blanking and they're probably just gonna turn up a month from now somewhere stupid that I didn't think to look. Anyway, uh, for Christmas last year, one of my friends got me this box set of 30 nightmare movies. And I love these sort of box sets of horror movies, uh, most of which are not very good, which I can appreciate those sorts of films. And I plan to do a video for all of these, at least most of them, the ones I didn't turn off, like, most of the way in because I just couldn't take them anymore, and there are a few of those. But there has been one disc in this thing that has had consistently good movies on it so far, and I'm referring to it as the zombie disc because it has all zombie movies on it. One of which is Night of the Living Dead, but everybody's seen Night of the Living Dead, so I don't really need to do anything with that. But the movie I'm going to be doing today is Last of the Living, which came out... I shouldn't be wearing these. Does it even say when it came out? No, it doesn't. I will be back in a moment. Alright, I am back with another camera angle that I like a lot better than the other one I had before. And... Crap. I think it came out in 2009. I'm gonna check that again. Uh, but apparently this was also made in New Zealand, which I did not realize uh, when I was watching it, which I should have realized because of their very obvious accents. Anyway, uh, Last of the Living is a comedy zombie movie, which is the case for pretty much all the movies I've seen so far on the zombie sis uh, disc, aside from uh, Night of the Living Dead and I Am Omega, which I haven't actually seen yet. It sounds like a another version of Last Man on Earth, The Omega Man, I'm Legend. I have absolutely no idea what to expect, but I will get to that later, but Last of the Living centers around uh, three guys, for the most part, who've been uh, living in different people's houses, I think, uh, following the zombie apocalypse, uh, and just sort of goofing off, playing video games, uh, using whatever people's stuff they find. Uh, one of them is sort of an airheaded, overly macho metalhead guy, which I like that he's a metalhead. He keeps trying to give people, well, not keeps trying to give, he tries to give 
this girl who we meet later, a demo tape of his band, the rest of which is already dead. And he's just kind of obsessed with his music and himself throughout the whole thing, and I'm kind of tired of the sort of image of the overly macho, airheaded metalhead. I'm really tired of uh, metalhead bullies in movies because a lot of times they're the ones being bullied. But on the other hand, there is a zombie wearing a Neurosis t-shirt in the film, so that's good. I didn't script this, I have absolutely no idea where I'm going, but anyway, there's him, there's a guy who's named uh, Ashley, I can only assume he's named after Ash from the Evil Dead movies, but I'm not sure. Uh, who's very uh, insecure, he's like wears this protective, I don't know if it's a football helmet or a hockey mask or what it is, but he wears all this protective gear wherever he goes. He's super meticulous and precise about everything. And uh, he gets called the girl of the group a lot by the other two guys, which drives him crazy. And then there's another guy who kind of doesn't have a much of a character other than being obnoxious and just trying to be a tough guy and failing a lot. Uh, he's still entertaining. There's just not much of a defining character trait to him as much as a lot of the other characters. And they uh, sort of go around killing zombies and things until they meet this girl who's a scientist and she's got this uh, zombie blood in a little uh, needle that she's just taken. She's gonna try to go to this island and make a sample of it to give to people so that they can create a cure for the zombie virus. And she drops it and the guys trying to help her step on it and don't see anything wrong with it. They just kind of generally screw things up for her a lot, and they're sort of the comic relief to her straight man character. Uh, that's not quite the right words, but anyway, they all need to get this uh, zombie blood to take to this island to get the cure. And, as you can probably imagine, things go horribly wrong. Uh, before I get into spoilery stuff, I thought this movie was not as funny as it could have been, but still fairly funny. The zombie effects were pretty good. Uh, I liked uh, the way the zombies looked. Uh, they would very deliberately cut away every time uh, someone got killed and there was would be a splash of blood on somebody else or you'd see the decapitated body afterwards, but all things considering, the gore effects were really good in this movie, I think. And the soundtrack was really good in this. Uh, the score had a very Midnight Syndicate feel to it. I actually wasn't sure if it wasn't Midnight Syndicate until I checked the credits and realized it was the guys who had, same group of guys who did practically everything on this movie, I think. But you don't just have the score, you've got this recurring Last of the Living rock theme, which also gets played in the credits by, I believe it's the band that the Metalhead character was a part of, who all died, and you've got all these little 
punk songs and hard rock songs and even a rap song sprinkled throughout the movie and I loved those songs even when they had nothing to do with what was happening. I didn't care, I liked it. So going on to spoiler stuff, uh, the macho metalhead guy uh, has this signature move thing he's trying, uh, f fighting move that he's tried in a million different situations. We see a video of him boxing with somebody and just spinning in a circle and getting knocked out by him. He calls this move the Berserker and it never works on anybody or anything. He tries it several times in the movie and it always screws up. Uh, he gets bitten so he decides to be a decoy uh, while the others make a break for it and he just takes his shirt off and starts berserkering these zombies as he gets ripped to pieces, which was really entertaining. Uh, they make it to the plane. I think, uh, the girl gets bitten, though, and they're all debating whether or not they're gonna make it, and she's like, it takes an hour for somebody to turn, so I'm gonna fly the plane and we're gonna make it. The two guys fall asleep on the plane. When they wake up, she's a zombie. So, uh, rather than killing her or just pushing her out of the plane, they give her a parachute and drop her out of the plane. Uh, they then, uh, Ashley has to land the plane and he's never landed a plane before. So he insists that they use the parachutes. They've given the only parachute to the zombie, so that doesn't exactly work. So following that, uh, the other guy gives Ashley a pep talk about how he's played flight games on PlayStation before, so how much different can it be? And he winds up landing the plane a little bit roughly, but they make it. And everybody on the island's a zombie. The other guy that isn't Ashley gets bitten, and Ashley kind of ends up on a rowboat by himself in the middle of the ocean at the end of the movie. And I feel like so many of these horror movies I've seen recently have such ambiguous endings to them. I don't really know what I would have done in that situation, because... It's kind of just this apocalypse, and you don't really know if Ashley's going to survive. But, yeah, I just really feel unsatisfied with a lot of these ambiguous horror movie endings that don't really... They don't really make me intense. I mean, even with a movie like The Birds, when you have that ambiguous ending, I just kind of felt like, but I wanted to know what was going to happen. Why'd you have to cut it away like this? So there's that factor. And then in the credits, you've got the band doing the Last of the Living song and a bunch of bloopers from the movie, which I really enjoyed. I liked uh, seeing these guys sort of just having fun. I could tell with some of the horror movies in this box set that they just kind of wanted to make money or be preachy in one case, one of the worst cases, and didn't really have a lot of thought or heart put into it. But all of these zombie movies, people seem to really care about their zombie movies, especially the, sort of the underground ones. Uh, I actually saw The Dead Don't Die recently, which a lot of people hated. I really liked, just because I could tell how much fun the people making that movie must have had doing it. Zombie movies in general just are kind of fun, unless they're depressing. So I highly recommend Last of the Living. Uh, not as highly as some movies in this. Uh, not as highly as most movies, but I still recommend it if you uh, want a good zombie movie that's a lot of fun.
uh, yeah, words. Thanks for watching. <laughs>